What's up guys, Scott Elsie here and I'm going to show you how to install a light bar on your Obala 246 Cayman. Before you install your light bar, you got to pick out a light bar. And so you want to find a light bar that has a IP rating, that's just a water resistant rating. And then you want to make sure the brackets that it comes with is corrosive resistant, such as stainless steel or aluminum bracket. But I'm going to walk you through how I installed mine. Um, so let's get started. All right, let's come up to the front of the boat. And you can see that I've mounted my light bar pretty much right in the center. Um, that's probably one of the hardest things to do when you're mounting your light bar is finding the appropriate location on the T-top because there's really no hard points to measure from to really kind of make sure that you get in the center of the T-top. And so what I did was I just kind of just placed it up there uh, while standing on the front cushion, just kind of kind of like how I'm doing right here kind of get it in where I was doing right here and I just kind of leveled it with my hands to the best of the ability I could but one thing you want to do when you install your light bar is you want to make sure that the light does not hit your bow of the boat um, when it's turned on at night and so that's pretty hard to do when it's daytime and you're trying to lamp uh, trying to align the light appropriately without having it on so one of the tricks that I found out that you could do is you walk down to the bow of your boat and you kind of get on your back lay on your back and you want to lean as far as you can back and look up to the top of your t-top and if you can't see the light you can't see the light bar then the lights not gonna hit your bow and so that's what I did I positioned it and I kept moving it forward and backwards until I cannot see it anymore and this method actually worked really good for me when I went and tested it out the other night um, light I didn't have any flood light hitting the bow of my boat and so it didn't mess up my night vision in order to get a watertight seal going through the t-top I use a scan strut and you can see a little picture over there it comes with many different sizes uh, so you have to pick the one that fits the size cable that goes with your light bar. I'll show you the size that I got here in this video uh, for the Aurora. I've been really happy with the Aurora so far. Um, this is one of the like probably mid-tier brand light bars. It's not like a high high brand light bar. Um, there's some that are way more expensive than this one. This one costs I think around $200. But you can see that um, it's all aluminum bracket. has a good little spacer here to um, prevent vibration and rough what rough water or even it doesn't even hear any whistling either when you're running through they have a, a patented design I can't see it. there's a little screw somewhere on there which keeps moisture keeps moisture from going into the light or lets moisture come out of the light so I hadn't had any kind of fogging or anything like that yet but it's still kind of too early to determine how the durability of the light um, maybe in a year from now I'll do another review of it and see if it does actually hold up to the weather so after you get your light bar positioned there you have to actually drill the holes and that was a challenging part for me is how do you get up on your t-top to drill the holes um, there's just no easy way of doing it and so what I did was I ended up putting a ladder right here and I'll show you and I ended up putting a blanket over this to protect it and I put a ladder up here and I actually stayed in the center as much as I could on the t-top to get my body up there and I'm gonna put pause real quick and I'm gonna show you how I had the ladder set up on the boat stay with me all right I just got my ladder in place you can see here and one thing you want to make sure you do is put um, a towel in between your t-top and your ladder you don't want to scratch the paint or anything or cause any kind of chipping you can see how I have it here. Um, I'm not going to climb up the ladder right now because I don't have anybody to hold the back end of it. But I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of how I set it up and how I was able to get up on the T-top. And then once you get on the T-top and you get it all leveled out and you drill your hole, you're going to have to run your wire through your radio box. You can see right here I got some epoxy in addition to the uh, scan strut that I put in there just for additional sealant 
and I ran it all the way down the radio box here. Y'all don't see it. And you can see you can, hopefully you can see where it kind of goes in right there. And so what it does is that wire runs down this tubing here and it comes all the way down and it goes into your console right here all right let's take a look inside of that actually I'm going to remove this covering real quick um, so you can see where it comes out at all right so I just took out the four screws that's holding the cover on one thing I wanted to show you when you lower the cover make sure you don't just drop it um, there is your light wire it comes down and it's connected uh, to right here but all you do to disconnect it you just kind of pull on the wires real carefully and it'll come right on out you see they just disconnect just like that you know, so it's real easy connection but just be aware that your light is connected to it when you take this cover off uh, to get it out of the console you kind of got to turn it turn it sideways tilt it up a little bit and just walk it out it's really not very difficult at all to take it off all right but you can see here you see that's the starboard that I was talking about. See how it's starting to kind of look like Swiss cheese a little bit where all the places where I'm drilling in at. But um, it's not too bad though. I'm hitting that one a couple more times. And then you can see right here. I wish they just had a, a stud, installed a stud here sticking out. And so and then you could just finger tight it instead of just having all of these little marks that you get from removing and putting that one on. So, I'm trying to find that hole. Oh, I was too low. Alright. This might be hard to see. I'm going to try to. Alright. Right there. So, you see that hole right there? This is where your light bar wire will run out of um, and it's very difficult to be able to get the wire from this point here um, from the t-top tube and the reason why is the reason why is because there's such a long run between here and here um, if they would have installed a pull cord it would have made this process a lot easier and this is the hardest part about installing the light bar on the Rabal 246 Cayman. In order for me to get the wire in, uh, I tried several methods. Try to use the vacuum cleaner. That didn't really work for me. But what I ended up doing was I got a piece of fishing line with a small weight on it, but it was like 50 pound test, a braid, and I just dropped it all the way down and I just kind of worked it way by jiggling it. Just jiggled the wire and worked its way all the way down. And the weight will go all the way down right here it'll go all the way down to here and it'll just kind of stop and then i used a clothes hanger on this side and made kind of a fishing hook i made kind of a fishing hook um thing and i stuck it through the hole right there and one thing you want to do when you're running your wires um through it just make sure they're all together you don't want them kind of separate like that when you're running it through the tube you want to make sure they're kind of taped together and it just makes it a little bit more rigid um, I end up using masking tape to pull it off afterwards I just got tired afterwards I didn't pull it all off but I'll do that and then I actually wired it to my accessory switch right here and I just did that with a non shrink connector there now if you have underwater lights um, your wiring is going to be a little bit more it's going to be different than this because you'll have your underwater lights running to here but I don't have underwater lights so it's just a real quick easy connection from here to there well I hope you guys enjoyed the video light bar installation is pretty easy the longest part is running that wire from the top of the T-top down the 
down the tube but I really enjoy it and I'm going to take it out here tonight and kind of show you what it looks like at night alright stay tuned alright guys we just got on the water and you can see that it's pretty dark outside um, we're going to finish testing out our light bar that we just installed on our ball you can see it I mean, it's, it's really bright try not to give you a direct but you notice how I'm going to turn off the top lights right here and you will see how uh, the light does not hit the bow of the boat and then we're gonna go for a little test rod all right see what I mean right here and so your night vision will not get messed up at all all right let's take a look at it here this is how you want to have it set up Where the light does not hit the boat. All right, let's go for a run. I'm not really sure if you guys can see how well it actually is lit up out here. Um, you can see that it definitely lights up all the buoys here, the floodlight. And um, as I was running in, I marked every little crab trap. Let's take a look over here when I turn towards the bank, and you'll just see the the bank just light up. Slow little turn. 